The Nazis were evil. These psychopaths did horrible experiments on their prisoners. These war criminals even experimented on themselves so they could become ultimate fighting machines. From creepy doctors like Josef Mengele that carried out strange tests on baby twins to prison guards that exposed their innocent victims to ice-cold temperatures, welcome to History Uncharted. Today, we'll be showing you some of the most shocking Nazi secrets of World War II. Methamphetamine Nazi soldiers dosed themselves to boost their physical and mental performance. Amphetamines played a vital role because of their psychoactive effects. These stimulants were also called go pills, pep pills, speed, or uppers. In the minds of these superhuman soldiers, speed is the essence of war. The faster you are, the more you can kill without getting killed yourself. Amphetamines stimulate the central nervous system, reducing appetite and fatigue, and increasing wakefulness and well-being. The Nazis weren't the only soldiers to take these substances. American, British, and Japanese forces also consumed large amounts of it. The Nazis believed that methamphetamine gave them physical and mental superiority. This drug doesn't provide escapism and pleasure like alcohol, opium, or heroin do. Instead, it increases hyper-alertness and vigilance. Their Aryan ideology of perfection inspired them to become superhuman, to become super soldiers. Their Führer, Hitler, declared this in one of his iconic speeches. We don't need weak people, we want only the strong. Hitler clearly indulged in methamphetamine. His feelings of greatness and immortality were definitely drug-induced. German chemist Friedrich Hauschild encountered the amphetamine Benzedrine. This artificial stimulant was used to improve athletic performance during the Olympic Games in Berlin in 1936. This inspired him to synthesize methamphetamine, or speed. In the winter of 1937, the tablets were sold under the brand name Pervitin. You could buy this wonder drug at pharmacies without a prescription. Boxes of chocolates spiked with methamphetamine were also available. What a wonderful gift for a loved one. The German soldiers had an advantage because they were under the influence of methamphetamine. They could fight harder and longer than their opponents. They could run faster than the speed of light, but it still wasn't enough for them to win the war. Twins Dr. Josef Mengele, the so-called angel or demon of death, operated on innocent children in the death camps. He had no regard for human life, not even innocent children. On the contrary, he specifically picked children as his guinea pigs. This sadistic monster offered them candy and special treats to gain their trust. Then he would lure them into his lab and do the most horrendous things to them. Guess his favorite toys? Twins. That's right. Mengele obsessed about twins. He believed that one twin could act as the subject of the experiment and the other as the control. Mengele tried to figure out how Germans could reproduce more twins. Guess in his own mind and against popular wisdom, the more German people you produced, the better. First, he amputated the limbs of Jewish children. Next, he infected them with serious diseases like typhus. Last of all, he conducted blood transfusions on both the twins. Impossible to understand why. He also sewed twins together to create conjoined twins. His insane cruelty is unparalleled. He did his so-called experiments in Auschwitz II Birkenau, which was the most dangerous concentration camp with the lowest number of survivors, thanks to him. Dr. Mengele is said to have ended the lives of 1,500 Jewish children. Only 200 survived, and their lives were forever changed. He traumatized them irreparably. Survivor Eva Moses Kor had told the world that Mengele performed blood transfusions on twins that had different genders in order to change their original genders. He experimented with their genitals and even tried to attach the urinary tract of one girl onto another girl's colon. Fourteen other twins had their hearts injected with chloroform. Most of the twins that endured this insane level of torture and humiliation didn't make it. If one of these poor children somehow managed to somehow stay alive, he would quickly end their life. Then they would be dissected in order to produce comparative post-mortem reports. Some didn't even need a report. Dr. Mengele had his fun and then got bored with his test subjects. In later years, his only son visited him in prison. They didn't get on at all. High Altitude Nazis carried out depressurization experiments on their victims. 
In 1942, at Dachau concentration camp, Dr. Sigmund Rascher initiated this program. He wanted to teach German pilots to eject themselves at high altitudes and survive in freezing temperatures. Better to die than to put up with Nazi Dr. Rascher. The experiment took place in a low-pressure chamber that simulated altitudes of up to 68,000 feet or 21,000 meters. The victim would lose consciousness after suffocating. Some didn't regain consciousness. If they did recover their consciousness, which was a particularly bad idea, Dr. Rasha performed vivisections on their brains. He really enjoyed his job. Out of 200 test subjects, 80 instantly passed away, and the rest took a little more time. One such victim was 37 years old and in good health before he was taken. His behavior started changing because he was losing oxygen. He started wriggling his head about four minutes into the experiment. One minute later, he experienced cramps and then he fell unconscious. He became motionless, breathing three times in the next minute. He completely stopped breathing at 30 minutes. He turned blue. Then foam came out of his mouth. An hour later, the doctors dissected him concluding in the end that the poor man had died. Transplants The word transplant sends shivers down most people's spines. Even nowadays, transplants have a high fail rate. That's because it is mostly experimental. Either people's bodies accept the transplanted organ or they do not. If not, you're in deep trouble. But that's transplants in a sterilized, professional, kind, modern hospital, 80 years after World War II. So can you imagine what transplants were like back then? From September 1942 to December 1943, experiments took place at Ravensbrück concentration camp. The German armed forces were interested in studying muscle, bone, nerve regeneration, and bone transplantation from one person to another. Strangely enough, they preferred not to experiment on themselves. During these experiments, people had their muscles, bones, and nerves removed without anesthesia. Prisoners also had bone marrow injected with bacteria so that doctors could do research into the effectiveness of their experimental drugs against the bacteria. The victims suffered agony. They were left mutilated and with permanent disabilities or worse. Holocaust survivor Jadwiga Kaminska has talked about her time at Ravensbrück in August 1946. She underwent two operations. One involved one of her legs. She had no idea what the procedure was. All she remembers is the pain that she endured. She developed a fever after the surgery. Her leg was oozing pus and she was given no aftercare. The reason why she was chosen for the operation was because she was a young girl and a Polish patriot. The Nazis hated heroines like her. Seawater from July 1944 to September 1944 at Dachau concentration camps, an original method of torture was developed drinking untreated seawater. As a rule of thumb, seawater cannot be drunk by anyone because of the high salt content. It can cause dehydration. So the Nazis were trying to create a way to make seawater drinkable. Victims were then deprived of any food and water. They were given filtered seawater. It was salty. Dr. Hans Eppinger gave a group of 90 Romani travelers nothing but seawater to drink. This left them so dehydrated that they were literally licking mopped floors for any droplets of drinkable water. Holocaust survivor Josef Chofenig has described these seawater experiments as horrendous. Victims were so thirsty that they couldn't swallow. They were desperate. At the time, Chofenig was operating an x-ray machine in the infirmary, and he could do nothing to help fellow prisoners. Otherwise, he would have suffered the same fate. So he suffered in silence himself. Sterilization one of Nazi Germany's main missions was to obliterate the Jewish and Romani travelers' populations at all costs. Nazis wanted only Aryans on the planet and no one who wasn't blonde and blue-eyed. So they came up with the idea of sterilizing Jewish people. From March 1941 to January 1945, sterilization programs began at Auschwitz and Ravensbrück. Sterilization experiments were done through x-rays, medicines and surgeries. Thousands of victims were sterilized against their will. Unhinged Nazi scientist Karl Klauberg enjoyed doing x-rays on women to find out whether or not they had obstructions in their ovaries. After three sessions, their uteruses were injected with caustic substances such as iodine and silver nitrate. It was done without anesthetic. Many didn't survive and others were left with permanent injuries and infections. The injections caused unwanted side effects such as bleeding, abdominal pain, and cervical cancer. 
The ones who got cancer were vivisected. Both their wombs and cervixes were taken out, yet again without anesthesia. So doctors switched to radiation as a method of sterilization. It worked, but it caused burns. Only about 700 women were successfully sterilized. Any woman who resisted Klauberg was deemed unfit to be a test subject and sent straight to the gas chamber. Men were also sterilized by having x-rays conducted on their genitalia. Their reproductive organs were then removed for lab analysis. Nazi doctor Hermann Stieve had the habit of telling his female patients the date they would be executed. He then compared their psychological distress to their menstrual cycles. Steve particularly enjoyed dissecting women and examining their reproductive organs. He sexually abused some of them so that he could see the path of the sperm through their reproductive system. Freezing. In 1941, the Luftwaffe Air Force tried to find ways to prevent hypothermia. 300 victims were taken to be experimented on. Some of them were captured Soviet soldiers. Because Germans believed that they specifically had a higher resistance to the cold, roughly 400 experiments took place. Some victims were unfortunate enough to be test subjects more than once. Prisoners were placed naked in the open air for hours on end with temperatures lower than minus 7 degrees Celsius or 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The experimenters were studying the physical effects of victims experiencing the cold weather. Victims were rewarmed by being thrown into boiling water better to stay cold. In August 1942, at the Dachau camp, prisoners were placed in tanks of freezing water for three hours. They would scream in pain as their bodies froze. They would then be thrown into boiling water. Many didn't survive. These freezing experiments simulated the conditions that soldiers suffered on the Eastern Front. German forces weren't prepared for the freezing temperatures, and no wonder. This is History Uncharted. See you next time.